What's up everyone, welcome to the new mini-series where I'm gonna teach you how to write a bootloader from scratch. In this video you will learn how boot sequence looks like, what a real mode is and you will write your first bootable code. This series will consist of three videos and by the end of it you will have a fully working bootloader that will load a 32-bit kernel capable of displaying messages on the screen. You don't wanna miss it so make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Let's start by answering a simple question. What happens when you power on your PC? All starts with POST or power on self-test. Power supply sends power to all the components, then BIOS firmware takes control and it initializes CPU, memory and other hardware components. The POST checks for hardware errors, such as checking memory and ensuring all the essential devices are operational. Then BIOS firmware code is copied from ROM to random access memory to your RAM for faster execution. Once all that is done, a search for bootloader begins. BIOS checks the boot order setting to find the boot device. The firmware looks for the master boot record, which is the first 512 bytes of the boot device, also called the boot sector. It identifies it by looking at last two bytes, which are 55 and AA respectively. Once the bootloader is located, BIOS loads it to memory and executes the code. Now that you know the basics of BIOS boot sequence, let's talk about the real mode, which is a 16-bit mode in which all x86 CPUs start their execution. Later on, they switch to protected mode, but we're gonna talk about it in the next video. In real mode, memory access is handled using segmentation. Uh, we have little over 1 megabyte of addressable memory in format segment offset. 16-bit segment address is stored in one of segment registers, this is basically a starting point of a segment, and 4-bit offset value is stored in one of the general purpose registers, so in total we have 20 bits, 2 to the power of 20, so roughly 1 megabyte. To calculate a physical address you can use this equation, we are taking the base address of a segment, multiplying it by 16, which is equivalent to shift left by 4 operation, so we are sort of making space for the offset, this is like an explanation for those who don't really get the uh, hexadecimal math, but it's okay, you don't uh, need to know it perfectly, but anyway, to this you add an offset and you have the physical address of the exact location memory that you want to access. You also have to know that real mode is not secure at all, and when CPU runs in it, a user program can impact kernel in such way that it can completely destroy it. Alright, so enough theory for now, uh, let me show you some tools that you need to install. Uh, firstly, sudo apt install nasm. You need uh, nasm, this is gonna be the compiler that we're gonna use to compile our assembly code. And the second thing is sudo apt install qmu system x86. I already have it installed, uh, but yeah, just copy these commands, these both commands from the video description, paste them to terminal, and you will be good to go. Let's go to documents. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Uh, let's make the, uh, let's call it bootloader, cd bootloader, and let's type code to fire up Visual Studio Code, one of my favorite IDEs. Uh, let me make a folder called bin to store our binaries, and a folder called source to store the source files. And this is the... Uh, sort of elegant way of handling your projects. It is not very necessary because this is gonna be a very small project, right? But uh, it is just good to have this habit of sorting files. Uh, let me make a boot.asm file inside the source and inside the root directory make file. Oh, it's not inside the... Uh, wait. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, file make file like this in root directory move okay uh, if you hadn't have never used make file so this is basically a, a file that will allow us to compile and clean the project much quicker it is gonna be a um, lot uh, more uh, elegant sort of way 
if you need to compile a lot of files at the same time, it's easier to just type uh, make all instead of uh, compiling each file, uh, each file uh, separately. So this basically allows us a little, gives us a little automation. But don't worry if you never used it. Uh, I'm gonna show you line by line how to do it. Okay, so let's start writing the code. Uh, we want to start with specifying that we are in 16 bits like this and the origin of our code. So we want to tell assembly, our assembler, uh, that the code will be loaded at this address. The code will start at this address. And why this address? Well, because BIOS will uh, load our bootloader to this address in memory, basically. That's why. So start label, uh, we want to start with CLI, which is clear interrupts. And interrupts are these uh, signals that uh, allow CPU to sort of change focus. So if it is executing a task and an interrupt from a keyboard, for example, is triggered, then CPU is pausing the current task, it's going to handle this interrupt and then uh, goes back and resumes the its previous activity. So uh, it works like this. But I'm gonna tell you more about interrupts uh, later in this video. So let me move uh, to the register AX, the value 0x00. Uh, we want to we want to set the uh, base of all the almost all the code segments, almost all the segments to uh, to this value. So now you go like this: ds ax move es ax move uh, what else? ss ax right? Uh, ss ax move sp to zero x. 7C00. This is the stack pointer. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. Uh, this is a stack pointer, and we want a stack pointer to point here, because it, it it will gonna um, it will grow downwards, sort of. So this stack will grow to the zero from here to the address zero, and our cult is loaded from here. Uh, starts here, so uh, you just have to imagine it's sort of imagine a table, and you have this zero level, you have this zero seven c zero zero level. So our stack will grow here, and our our code starts here and goes up, sort of. Um, that's how it looks. And the after we set the stack pointer, uh, let's type uh, let's type what I, I forgot STI. Okay, I have to look at my notes sometimes. Uh, STI uh, will enable interrupts uh, back. So, uh, yeah, interrupts, okay. Because uh, this is basically also disable interrupts. Right? Not only clearing it, but um, it makes CPU not care about uh, any interrupts. Uh, we don't want it, we don't want uh, this setting to be interrupted in any way. And now let's move to the register si or message and we don't have a message yet so msg it's gonna be the word hello world like this with an exclamation mark and zero because uh, we need to end end the string with a null character uh, great actually let's make it db not dw Mm, and it should that should be uh, that should be all for now okay maybe not all for now because uh, now we just uh, we we did a basic setup right and what do we want to do now is to print this message but there is no function like print like in C you can just print F and uh, and specify uh, your string here right but there is nothing uh, like this when you have no operating system, you have no libraries, no nothing. So how do you print it? Well, BIOS takes care of it. So let's take a closer look at what BIOS actually is. Basic input output system uh, offers some low level services called functions that are very handy during boot up process. In real mode, we can access them via software interrupts. Here you can see some common functions and a little setup they require to work. Right now we want to be able to print characters to the screen, so we're gonna use 0x10 function with ah register set to 0xe. Okay, so let's make this simple loop here, label print. We want to uh, start by 
typing instruction load sb, uh, which basically loads byte at address uh, ds dssi to al register and increments si. So here at this address, remember this uh, formatting that I showed you before, segment offset. At this address uh, is our first letter. So after we do load sb, it will load h, capital H to al register, and uh, it will increment si, so now it points here. Nice. So let's compare al with zero, because if al is a null character, then we want to jump to done, which is another label. Let's put it here. And in done, we want to clear interrupts and we want to halt, which basically mean means stop CPU, stop further CPU execution. I think this is a correct description. It will basically stop the execution, right? All right, but if uh, it is not, if it is not a null character, uh, then we want to move to the register AH, our value 0x, 0e. We want to int 0x10. Uh, so we want to call BIOS to print this character. And then we want to unconditionally jump to print. Uh, why? Because we need to do it sort of a couple times to print uh, a whole sentence. So uh, as the last thing, Remember, uh, we need these two bytes at the end. 511th and 512 bytes, they need to be AA55. Uh, in in this order, because it is in little endian, right? So you need to kind of do it like this, 0x uh, AA55. Of course, uh, when you will inspect it, when we will inspect it in hex editor, it will be in reverse. But yeah, this is just the little endian notation. So you do it like this. But there is a little, uh, there is a little catch actually. The W, not DB. Uh, there is a little catch because uh, we need to put them and at this exact location. But of course, this code is not 510 bytes, so we need to put some more characters here. We're gonna do it with times um, times 510 minus dollar sign minus double dollar double dollar sign. Uh, db0 like this and uh, it will basically fill this rem this space here with uh, with zeros until you reach 510 uh, so basically what can we do now go to make file type all tab this tab is super important here nasm dash f bin source boot.asm output bin boot.bin like this and let's uh, make clean also tab rm dash f bin boot.bin uh, so when we type make all it will compile our uh, boot asm file and if we type make clean it will clean the uh, previously compiled binary from this folder. So let's let's test it. Clear ls, we are in the correct folder, folder, just checking. So make all. We have one error uh, somewhere, line 31, here. Uh, what's wrong? Oh, uh, there shouldn't be a comma here. I think this is, an, this is the... This is why, yes, okay, so as you can see, it uh, was successfully compiled. If you go to bin, you can see we have this boot.bin. So now uh, let's type bless, boot.bin. Bless is a very nice hex editor. You can download it by uh, typing sudo, oh wait, uh, I need new terminal, uh, sudo apt install bless just like this and it will install bless for you so let's go back to bless and at the bottom you can see we have 55aa 
exactly at uh, 511th and 512th uh, byte. So uh, let's uh, let's test the code, right? If it really prints what we want it to print. So QMU system x86 underscore 64 dash hda and boot dot bin. This is our file. Press enter. And as you can see, we have this beautiful message, hello world. So hopefully you have a little taste of what's coming. And in the next video, I'm going to introduce you to JDT, which is a global descriptor table. And we're going to play more with interrupts. So subscribe. You don't want to miss it. And see you soon. Oh,